It's time on low boost. We're going racing in a Trans Am. <laughs> So you guys all know, I love all different types of cars. Track cars, drift cars, street cars, drag cars, you name it. It's kind of hard to find one that does it all, but if you like one thing, you only need one thing. Today we're gonna focus on a car that is purpose built for one thing and one thing only, going straight. Now, some of my track friends that follow me here, it's okay, just sit tight for this one. This build is fantastic. I'm here with Ricky. He's got a fourth gen F body Trans Am that has got a lot of work done to it. He's had it for a long time. So Ricky, tell me a little bit about it. What did this car start off as? Oh, well, bought it back in 2017 for my buddy Kevin that owns Twisted Synergy Motorsports. Okay. And it was a bone stock automatic car back then. It's 2000. Took it to the track, went 13.5 at 110 with a slipping 4L60. That was your first time, was 13? 13, 13? The first time was 13.8, but okay. then got better T8 and it went a little bit quicker and I pulled the beehive out of the filter, so still had the factory paper filter in it. <laughs> uh, then it went all out over nine months and it went, now it's got a strange S60 in it, T56 Magnum, monster twin disc, fuel system, uh, it was on E85 with the stock 160,000 mile LS1, which is a cam and an oil pump and valve train. So you had a 5.7 in this, obviously, originally, your old mm -hmm. school LS1. And what, what you had that, that for a while, though. That car was, what, made, what, 600-something horsepower? It made 606 the first go around, and then threw a little bit of extra timing in it, like a week later, it made 632, and then... I got used to it, it felt slow, and then uh, we swapped the pulley and it accidentally made 700 wheel and 575 torque. And oh it lasted like that for two seasons. That's, you know, that's the thing. You put together something, you don't go super crazy on it. Ricky's car isn't uh, what you would call the best looking uh, fourth gen. <laughs> He's got a couple different panels, a couple different wheels on it, but he, it does one thing and it, it just freaking goes. I should, you know, I'm. You called the Trans Am, but this thing, I, I kind of like, I kind of like you to call it the Firebird because what does it do? I mean, yeah, it shoots oh, cool little flames every now and then. Like one to, one to two foot flames out of the back of this thing at night. I mean, it's, it's nutty. So it lasted for two seasons and then what happened? I yanked it out before I broke it and sold it because it was worth money. Okay. And then started this over this last year, and this is a 402 stroker. It's an iron block six liter. Well, started out as an iron block six liter. You know, it's forged crank, rods, pistons. It's a 402 cubic inch stroker. It's got LSA square port heads, factory LS3 intake. LSA heads too, wow. Mm -hmm. The thick boys. <clears throat> and what supercharger is down there? Now it's a F1A94 from Pro Charger. Okay. And what did you have originally? I had a D1SC that was manufactured in 2006 and it was never serviced until uh, it got sent in by the guy I sold it to. <laughs> this stuff just lasts forever. And how much power did you put down with this? Uh, I ran out of fuel. The injectors uh, are pretty much maxed out, but it made 832 and 11 pounds. What injectors do you have? They're 950 cc's. Okay. Dice works. 832. 
And how many foot pounds? Made 670. The blower's way under spun or else it'd do better between the horsepower torque split. So what's your uh, what's your end game goal? You, I, I think you got more left in that blower on this setup really before before it hits its max power. Uh yeah, there's like another twenty thousand RPM I can go on this blower, and most guys with around the same cubic inches as me with similar setups, uh, around eighteen to twenty pounds, they make about eleven hundred wheel. You gonna tell anybody what it runs in the quarter mile? I don't care. I don't have secrets. It's I went ten eighty when it made six oh six, and I like haven't driven a stick car and like a year at that point and it was like 2500 DA. I mean, it was just, uh, conditions weren't ideal, but it went, it went 1080 at 128. I haven't been to the track since. They haven't really let me back in. Yeah, you got kicked out. <laughs> what do you think it'll trap now? I'd like to say somewhere between 140 and 145, but there's well, I can't really say unless I bring it to the track. Have you ever done a 60 to 130? I did on four-year-old junk radials, and it I had to ease into it from a 60 to 130. It was like an 850 DA, and it went 627. Boy. If you guys are into cars, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I upload a video every week about cars, whether it's you know, doing these great review videos and some of the local cars in the upstate New York area. I got a BMW E36 Turbo LS swap with a T56 six speed. I got a C5 Corvette that's a track car. A bunch of other cars I'm building with my dad. I got a 1966 Mustang. I do parts reviews on a bunch of the stuff that I do. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. How come you haven't road raced it? <laughs> it's not really set up for that. <laughs> what, what, yeah, you got a new tire on the back. What'd you get here? Oh, there's just some uh, Hoosier D07s I got off a of buddy that he had like low passes on them. I wanted to try a buy supply, so I bought them off him. I mean, this is probably the prettiest part of your car right here. I know, they're almost too nice for the car. I'll say. Now, Ricky tries to think that his F body Trans Am is a sleeper, but anybody that knows anything about cars, if you see that kind of tire on the back, you know just to stay away. It's for show. It's it, or it's just for show. Yeah, it's just for show. It's a, it's a V6 Trans Am. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing special to see here. Uh, I do think, I, I think, I love the flames. Uh, you got coming out of the front, especially because they come out of the back too. But I, you know, obviously a wrap would be good on this. But I think Ricky just likes leaving it like it is. I, I just think he likes the subtlety of the, I don't know. It's got the shit box look to it, but it thing, the thing really moves though. See, the real problem is I just can't figure out in my mind which color I want to paint it, so I just put them all on there. Pick them know? all on there? That's not a bad thing. <laughs> That's why you tell people. That's, yeah, you know, he's undecided. He's, he's, he's <laughs> color matching, he's got swatches, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do with yeah, it. Yeah, just a sample car, you know? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what about the drivetrain? What do you have for a transmission and rear end wise? shelf t56 magnum they rate them at like 700 foot pounds but there's guys making like 1000 1100 wheel with them and they're racing them at the track and it's got a monster lt1r twin disc those are rated for like 1100 rear wheel torque what and rear end is it it's a strange s60 all right last but not least uh what ecu are you running and uh, who did all the dyno tuning oh this is a factory computer from my old z28 got O2 operating system uploaded in it. Kevin over at Twisted Synergy uh, tuning the car. That's, he helped me a lot with building it. Like I built the car there. He just guided me and helped me with a lot of stuff on there if I couldn't find it on LS1 Tech pretty much. They're based out of Albany? Uh, they're down in Rensselaer. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So they're local. A lot of times when you're building a car, people are worried about a budget build or spending way too much money on stuff. And really what it boils down to is some people just want to spend money in the right places, but then get something inexpensive somewhere else. So Ricky's got some other things in his car that are not necessarily super expensive that he did save a lot of money on. What did you do with the intercooler setup and the radiator support? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Well, the blower and everything I bought used off my buddy, Kevin, and it it was like two grand for that with the blower, the brackets, and the surge valve. And then the front bumper support I bought off somebody else that had a Camaro, or no, they had a Trans Am. And that was like 200 bucks. The intercooler is just an on three cheap one for like 250 bucks. The piping is just three inch aluminum piping from like some place on eBay for like $80. And I mean, 
it's all good quality stuff and they work apparently because it's on there so yeah none of the clamps broke none of the couplers tore everything's solid on there but obviously your heads your injectors the blower that's mm -hmm. that's that's where you spent the money on and your clutch too the heads weren't really expensive those are like four hundred dollars like four six hundred dollars you find them good places the intake manifold for this is like 200 bucks it's okay. just i didn't spend money where like it didn't need to be spent because it's like i could have bought a holly high ram and 105 millimeter throttle body for 1200 dollars, but i'd still make the same power and still do the same thing <laughs> All right, thanks to Ricky for letting me do a little review on his car. The thing is fantastic. It's so fast. Um, I think my neck hurts from that one pull that we did in the car. So, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.